answering tough questions. We're going to address this in two ways. One of them is when the question is just the question, how to answer difficult questions. The second is going to be when you think something more is going on and there's something deeper and you get to use this as an opportunity to explore something different other than just answering a question. The most important thing is to prepare. Three big ways to prepare for answering tough questions. One of them is to watch particularly the En-ROADS Dynamics videos. When it comes to model behavior, 90% of questions we run into about why the model does what it does are explained by one of those 10 dynamics. Also, so many questions are answered in the FAQs on the support page. Find those. Also, other videos and videos of other people running workshops. You can just watch how various people on our team and even others have answered some of these tough questions. The other is to play with the model and ask us. Go to the support page, put in a ticket if there's a behavior that you don't understand. Those are some of the best ways to prepare. Sometimes, though, you'll get a question. You just don't know the answer and you couldn't prepare for it. Someone will say, well, why did the red line go down? Did their oil sector include this or that that would ex make it behave differently? You'll get a question like that. And often you can just smile and say, well, En-ROADS does have 45,000 equations and there were eight modelers, so nobody can memorize the whole model. But that said, I'd love to see if we can figure out what's going on. Or I'll need to get back to you, ask me later, I'll follow up. But often looking at the model together can be really powerful in a workshop. You say, well, let's see if we can figure it out. And a couple tips as you do that. One of them is that you may need to isolate exactly what you're being curious about. If it's late in the workshop and you've moved seven sliders, there could be interactions. Uh, you know, we have the multiple sliders paradox video that explains the challenge of moving many things at the same time. To answer a question like that, you may want to just isolate just that move and see if you can help that person figure out what's going on. The other is to know the graphs that are particularly revealing of what's underneath the hood a bit. Often energy demand is doing things you wouldn't expect. Sometimes the marginal cost of electricity production that shows the price of coal, oil, gas, and renewables and nuclear, all those things, uh, that can be particularly revealing. Um, those are, Kaya graph gives you a big picture view of everything that's changing in the energy sector. So those are some of the tips of places to look as you help them figure out what's going on. Okay, now let's look though at when you're actually being challenged, when there's something more afoot than just someone seeking some new information. So there'll be a question like, I'm not so sure how your future for coal is being modeled there. And uh, it also could be carbon removal or nuclear or population, or it could be anything in the model. Let's just take coal for a second. So the key thing is always take the high road. Never question someone's intent about what's going on. Minimize your defensiveness, but do express your confidence in the model about why the modeling team and you have confidence in it. And this is a good moment to bring out your five point confidence speech or whatever version of it you like. You know what it is. The short version is Climate Interactive and MIT built En-ROADS with the best available science using data from the IPCC and the IEA, International Energy Agency and other sources and comparing their scenario and testing their scenarios against the full suite of integrated assessment models. And there's transparency. All equations are shared, all parameters are shared in their 450 page reference guide on the website. Many of the parameters can be changed in the assumptions uh, panel within Enro. So whatever version of that, share some part of that, but then try to say yes. So if someone does that, I'm not so sure what you think about how you handled coal, see what you can say yes to and change something in the model that explores what they seem to be curious about. So you could say, well, it seems that you imagine a future with a lot less coal in the baseline, that perhaps 
That industry is dying all around the world. Well, let's see if we can explore the implications of that. Go to the assumptions and there you can say, what's a world with less coal? Uh, change the policy. In that case, you know, you can stop building of any coal capacity. Change something that moves in the direction of what a person's curiosity is, but also explore the implications of what does that actually mean for the future. But the key thing too, though, is move on. You've got to move on. Um, and the way that you do that is not just, I'm sick of talking about this, or I don't want to be asked tough questions. You use the grounding of like I said, we've got 45 minutes to get this temperature, which was 3.6. Now it's 3.3. We want to get it well below two. So let's keep on moving some sliders and make a change on coal, but then move on to the other things that'll get us all the way to a stable climate future. Also, when you're challenged, take the opportunity, if you can, to go a level deeper under this challenge. This is an amazing opportunity. When someone asks you a tough question, usually they're a courageous person. They're passionate about this issue. They're speaking up. They're willing to share their ideas in front of lots of people. So this is a moment to become deeply curious. You put on your detective hat and get very curious about the mental model, the understanding of a person somewhat different from you about this issue. Ask them some questions. What is it about the future of coal that leads you to think that this is where things are headed? What do you think the implications of that would be for how this plays out? Get curious about their mental model because this is a great opportunity to learn. All right, so those are some main tips about answering tough questions. First, just think questions that are what they seem, but then also the questions where there's something perhaps a little deeper going on. Go get them.